after studying this module you shall be able to understanding the concept of monetary policy and identify the objectives of indian monetary policy assess the role of rbi and the role of tight and liberal monetary policy in economic development evaluate the different instruments of credit policy compare the impact of indian fiscal and monetary policy on the economic environment let us understand the concept of monetary policy and identify the objectives of indian monetary policy monetary policy is a guiding policy by which the central bank that is reserve bank of india rbi of a country controls the supply of money availability of bank credit and cost of money that is the rate of interest it is one of the tools to control money supply in our economy monetary policy is the macroeconomic policy laid down by the central bank it involves administration of money supply and interest rate it is used by the government of a country to achieve macroeconomic objectives like inflation consumption growth and liquidity the rbi implements the monetary policy through open market operations bank rate policy reserve system credit control policy moral persuasion and through many other instruments all this will make changes in the interest rate or the money supply in the economy monetary policy can be expansionary and contractionary in nature increasing money supply and reducing interest rates indicate an expansionary policy the reverse of this is a contractionary monetary policy objectives of monetary policy in any economy the main objective of monetary policy is to regulate the demand and supply of money it aims to stabilize the prices of goods and services in an economy monetary policy regulates the use of money it also brings institutional changes in the financial sector of the economy following are the main objectives of monetary policy in india first stable growth monetary policy aims to control the supply of money in such a way so that it is enough to meet the demands for funds by people attempts are made to keep the resource at such level so that there is stability of prices plus growth in the economy second development of financial stability a stable economy is the one which is not much affected by the ups and downs of the market the economy which can bear the shocks of depression and recession period is a strong one these shocks are not good for any financial system it is the duty of rbi to take care of these things and always work to maintain the financial stability of the economy third attention to priority sectors of the economy the main aim of any monetary policy is to ensure that all the people all the sectors all the manufacturing and producing sector requirements of money must be met on time rbi in a country constantly makes efforts to provide timely and adequately credit at affordable cost of weaker sections and low income groups rbi along with nabard is focusing on microfinance through the promotion of self help groups and other institutions fourth employment generation as banks lowers the interest rates there increases the demand for money to be put in investment activities for infrastructure development etc this leads to increase in demand for labor force to complete the construction and other ancillary activities that is it increases the rate of employment in an economy fifth external stability 
with the growth of imports and exports, India's linkages with global economy are getting stronger. Earlier, RBI controlled foreign exchange market by determining exchange rate. Now, RBI has only indirect control over external stability through the mechanism of managed flexibility, where it influences exchange rate by buying and selling foreign currencies in open market. Sixth, rise in savings and investment. RBI, by offering eye-catching interest rates, boost savings in the economy. A high rate of saving promotes investment. Thus, the monetary policy by influencing rates of interest can influence saving mobilization in the country. Let us now assess the role of RBI and the role of tight and liberal monetary policy in economic development. A monetary policy is said to be tight if RBI increases the rate of interest, thus leaving people with less opportunity to get borrowed funds for their purchases and investments. Similarly, a monetary policy is said to be liberal if RBI decreases the rate of interest, thus leaving people with opportunity to get borrowed funds for their purchases and investments. RBI controls monetary policy through various ways. Some are, the repo rate is the rate at which banks borrow short-term funds from the RBI, while the reverse repo rate is the rate at which RBI borrows fund from the banks. The cash reserve ratio, CRR, which is the amount commercial banks have to keep as a deposit with the RBI. The more the CRR, the less will be the lending capacity of banks. The RBI uses the CRR to check liquidity in the market. If the RBI increases the CRR, the additional deposits required by banks will reduce their lending power resulting in less liquidity in the market. The fact the RBI did not adjust the CRR when it increased repo rates is a clear indicator they are anxious to maintain liquidity, money supply to keep stability in the market. So we can see that whether RBI measures a tight or liberal policy has a direct impact on the economic development of our country because it affects the availability of funds with public. Let us evaluate the different instruments of credit policy. RBI has quantitative and qualitative measures to influence the money supply and demand in the economy. The qualitative and general measures in effects the volume of credit while qualitative measures the selective or particular use of credit. Now we will discuss about quantitative measures. The first is bank rate. The bank rate is the rate at which RBI rediscounts the approved bills held by commercial banks. For controlling the credit, inflation and money supply, the RBI changes the bank rate in the economy. The second is open market operations. It refers to direct sale and purchase of securities of government in the open market to control the volume of credit. To reduce the volume of credit, these securities are sold in the market, whereas to increase the amount of money supply, these securities are brought from the market. The third is cash reserve ratio. CRR refers to that portion of total deposits with commercial banks are required to keep with the RBI. It reduces the lending capacity of banks. The fourth one is statutory liquidity ratio SLR. SLR refers to that portion of total deposits that banks are required to keep with themselves or in liquid assets. This also reduces the lending capacity of bank. 
Next, we will move on to discuss the qualitative measures. These are used by banks for selective purposes. Sometimes it could be to promote the money supply in a particular sector or to reduce in that sector. Measures for qualitative control are, the first one is margin requirement. It refers to the difference between the securities offered and the amount borrowed by banks. More the margin requirement, less will be the supply of money. Second is moral persuasion. It refers to psychologically persuading the people to invest in particular sector. Third is credit rationing. It refers to rationing the amount of credit given by banks. The RBI keeps on changing the limits to increase or decrease the money supply in the economy. We shall now compare the impact of Indian fiscal and monetary policy on the economic environment. The monetary policy involves changing the interest rate and influencing the money supply. Fiscal policy involves the government changing rates and levels of government spending to influence aggregate demand in the economy. These are both used to pursue policies of higher economic growth and controlling inflation. For example, the central bank may have target of 3% inflation rate. If they feel inflation is going to increase this targeted rate due to quick economic growth, then they can increase interest rates. Higher interest rates increase borrowing cost and reduce consumer spending and investment, leading to lower aggregate demand and lower inflation. If the economy goes into recession, the RBI would cut down the interest rates. Whereas fiscal policy is carried out by the government and it involves change of level of government spending and level of taxation. To increase demand and economic growth, the government will lower down the taxes and increase spending, leading to higher budget deficit. On the other hand, to reduce demand and reduce inflation, the government can increase tax rates and cut spending, thereby leading to smaller budget deficit. Thus, Indian fiscal and monetary policies have great impact on its economic environment. The nature of unemployment in our country is due to lack of capital formation. In India, Fiscal policy will help us to reduce the level of unemployment. In such a situation, government may decide to increase borrowing and spend more on infrastructure spending. This increased government spending will inject money into the economy and helps create jobs. The lower the rate of interest, more will be the demand for money for capital investment. Sometimes it is also suggested to keep the interest rates high as it will limit the allocation of scarce resources in the most efficient manner. The qualitative methods of credit control should be handled properly to ensure reasonable control on investments and reduce the adverse effect of it. In the same way, fiscal policy directly impacts the consumption pattern of consumer. If there will be more taxes, then lesser portion of income would be left for consumption, which ultimately bring down demand for goods and thus the demand for money and vice versa. On the other hand, more spending by government would increase the demand, forcing the banks to increase interest rates. Thus, we can see that fiscal and monetary policies are interrelated and have a great impact on our economy.
let us summarize what we have discussed so far. Monetary policy is a guiding policy by which the central bank, that is the Reserve Bank of India, RBI of a country, controls the supply of money, availability of bank credit and cost of money, that is the rate of interest. It is one of the tools to control money supply in our economy. The RBI implements the monetary policy through open market operations, bank rate policy, reserve system, credit control policy and moral persuasion and through many other instruments. All this will make changes in the interest rate or the money supply in the economy. Monetary policy can be expansionary and contractionary in nature. Increasing money supply and reducing interest rates indicate an expansionary policy. The reverse of this is a contractionary monetary policy. The Indian fiscal and monetary policies have great impact on its economic environment. The nature of unemployment in our country is due to lack of capital formation. In India, fiscal policy will help us to reduce the level of unemployment. In such a situation, government may decide to increase borrowing and spend more on infrastructure spending. This increased government spending will inject money into the economy and helps create job. Thank you.